In this presentation, we will discuss the auditing of inventory. So we're going through the auditing process. We are looking specifically to the inventory management process at this time. When we consider the inventory management process, we want to think about the idea of where inventory management lies with regards to first a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the patting is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials other types of processes so you'll note that inventory management obviously is closely related to the purchasing process therefore when we audit the purchasing process we have done some auditing with relation to the inventory management process when we audit the inventory management process we're doing some auditing of the purchases process when we're considering certain components of it as we build the audit plan we want to keep this in consideration so we could consider when we audit something like purchasing how much of the inventory management process will be audited how much of that bucket of information of evidence can we fill up with regards to inventory management as we audit the purchasing process as we do the inverse as well when we go to the inventory management process how much can we then apply out to the purchasing process so we can efficiently plan this information now we'll consider documentation with relation to inventory management started with the production schedule so the production schedule note of course would be involved if we're in the production of the inventory so we're considering production process there if we're in the purchasing and selling of inventory then we wouldn't have the production type components depending on the type of industry that we are in we want to build an expected demand for the business's products if we can ex if we have a normal expected demand as we'll see when we think about the risks involved with the inventory section if we have a normal demand then we can have more uh, assurance about the inventory process and the production schedule if the demand is a lot more volatile then we have some more risk involved in terms of the production schedule and then we have the receiving report records the receipt of uh, goods from the vendor so the receiving report is going to be what is recording the goods that we're going to receive from the vendor we discussed this in the purchasing process because of course the purchase of inventory is one of the things that we may purchase through the purchasing process the receiving report we could think about basically on the warehouse if we're in the warehouse we're receiving the, the the goods if we purchased it say from like china we're here in the u.s we purchased something from china it comes to us then we're imagining ourselves in the warehouse and we have then that's the point we put together the receiving report then we have the materials request uh, requisition that is materials requisition tracks material during the production process so the material requisition 
It's going to be an internal form, internal to the organization, and that's going to be tracking the materials. And we can think of it, if you think of like a job cost system and we're making the inventory, then the materials requisition form may be the form that is used to move the materials. Say if we're making guitars, we're moving the wood from the, uh, the inventory, the raw goods, to the work in process. So that's going to be an internal type of documentation transferring possibly from one account to another, one inventory account to another, raw materials possibly to work in process, which will finally be produced into the format of uh, finished goods, finished inventory. And then we have the inventory master file has information related to the business's inventory, including the perpetual inventory records. This is going to give us that the perpetual inventory records, kind of like the subsidiary type ledger that we might think of with regards to accounts receivable and accounts payable, giving us basically that detail that will be involved that we're going to need with regards to inventory. Documents continued. Production data information has information about the transfer of goods and related costs incurred at each stage of production. So as again, we're thinking about as producing inventory in this case, uh, production data has information about the transfer of goods and related cost incurred at each stage of that production level. Cost variance report. So now we have the variance report. Material, labor, and overhead costs will be charged to inventory during the manufacturing process. So when we make the goods, if we're making the inventory, we've got material, labor, and overhead. Those are the three components that we're going to have to consider in inventory if we produce the inventory. Uh, this is going to compare the actual cost to the standard or budgeted cost. So when we think about this, we're going to have a budget to the production process, often using something like, like standard costs, which are kind of like budgeted costs. And then we can take a look at the variance report, the difference report between what was budgeted for these components and, of course, what actually happened. And then we have the inventory status report has to, it's going to include or has the type and amount of products on hand so the inventory status report the types and the st the type and amount of products on hand and then the shipping order the shipping in order used to remove goods from the perpetual inventory sh uh, records so when we think about the shipping order we're thinking about the orders that are basically going out so we have the shipping order and that means if it's going out possibly we sold it and therefore, it's no longer uh, something that should be on our books. Therefore, this is the sh this is going to be the form that triggers the transaction that's going to be removing it from uh, typically the inventory on the business's books. Now we're going to take a look at the primary functions related to inventory. First, we have the inventory management. So inventory management primary function authorization of production activity and maintenance of inventory at appropriate levels issuance of purchase requisitions to the purchasing department so then we have the primary function of raw materials stores that involves the custody of the raw materials issuance of raw materials to the manufacturing department of course as we go through these functions we want to consider these functions and you're considering what will be the risks involved in these functions the inherent risk what internal controls might be put in place for them how can we test for the internal controls as the auditor and then of course uh the test of internal controls that we will do with regards to the auditing of them and then the substantive procedures that we can test related to these as well then we have the manufacturing the primary function of manufacturing that's going to be the production of goods then we have the finished goods storage so the storage of the finished goods which of course involves the custody of finished goods issuance of goods to the shipping department then we have the cost accounting cost accounting is the maintenance of the cost of manufacturing so we have to account for the maintenance of the cost of manufacturing inventory in cost records we want to make sure the inventory is in the cost records then we have the general ledger the general ledger is of course the accumulation classification summarization of inventory and related costs in the general ledger now we'll think of the segregation of duties with relation to inventory so remember this is going to be one of the major internal controls when we think about internal controls we have the sub segregation or separation of duties that meaning that the key components we're going to separate and therefore if, if there's going to be something like theft or fraud that's going to take place it would have to involve something called collusion where multiple people would have to get involved and plan in order to basically commit fraud so this is going to be one of the major internal controls separation segregation of duties that should come to mind anytime we think of internal controls with basically 
any type of system. Also note, of course, as we consider these internal controls, as always, that we're going to have more separation of duties, more segregation of duties that can be done as uh, companies are larger. If you go to a smaller type of companies, the question is what type of separation or segregation of duties will be appropriate given the size and the maintenance or the people that are involved within that organization. All right, segregation of duties. Inventory management function is segregated from the cost accounting function. So inventory management separate from the cost accounting. Why? If they weren't segregated, production and inventory costs can be manipulated. So if you have the, the same in person that's going to be involved in the inventory management function uh, and is also doing the cost accounting function, and then the production of inventory cost can be manipulated. And again, this is kind of the interesting factor for most people to actually think about where could fraud take place. And then for us as the auditor, we've got that kind of skeptical viewpoint that we have to have basically when we're designing or thinking about internal controls or auditing them. Where could fraud take place? And then uh, what can we do in order to set up internal controls to reduce it? And how can we test for those controls? So this may result in an over or understatement of inventory and net income. Then we have the next segregation. Inventory stores function is segregated from the cost accounting function. So inventory stores function segregated from the cost accounting function. If they weren't segregated, unauthorized shipments can be made. So that wouldn't be good. We can have the unauthorized shipments if we had the one person involved with those two items. And the theft of goods can be covered up. Obviously, inventory is something that's not as liquid as cash, but it's something that is fairly liquid and it depends on what type of inventory we have. So it's something that could be subject to theft and we want to make sure that we have the proper safeguarding and controls over the inventory as well. And that, of course, includes segregation or separation of duties. Then we have cost accounting function is segregated from the general ledger function. Cost accounting separates from the general ledger. If not segregated, it is possible to conceal unauthorized shipments. That, if that wasn't the case, it's possible for one person in charge of both things to conceal unauthorized shipments. And again, as you think of these things, you might say, well, one person wouldn't do that. I know the person involved. I know everybody involved in this. But notice as the companies grow, we don't possibly know everybody personally involved in the situation. And maybe that's good in, to some degree because we want to have basically some kind of checks and balances, some separations within uh, basically the system so the larger systems uh, you know are, are going to have that separation of duties you got to have it and also if we don't have the separation of duties remember that if if they're not separated the likelihood for someone to just realize that they could have the opportunity to commit fraud and not be caught if they once you once that's being realized and if that's coupled with a problem situation for individuals they're more you know like financial problems or something they're more likely to commit fraud. We, we would rather not have the temptation even be involved there. And therefore, uh, you, you know, you want to make sure to have the, the separation of duties and the fraud uh, pre prevention in place, the good controls. So cost accounting function is separated from the general ledger function. If it wasn't, it is possible to conceal unauthorized shipment. This can result in the theft of goods causing overstatement of inventory. Then we have the responsibility of supervising or of supervising physical inventory. So we're supervising the physical inventory separate from the inventory management and inventory stores function. So if they weren't segregated, it's possible that the inventory shortages will be covered up through the adjustment of the inventory records to the physical inventory. So notice once again, responsibility for supervising the physical inventory is separate separate from the inventory management and inventory stores function because if it's not it's possible that the inventory shortage will be covered up through the adjustment you can adjust the inventory records to the physical inventory uh, this could result in an overstatement of inventory so here we have our segregation of duties now we're going to post this out in a table type of format so we have the function over here and then we've got the area that will be involved including inventory management raw materials uh finished goods storage cost accounting it these are different areas that, that of course will be doing different things that's the point so we have the function of making uh of production schedules that's going to be in the inventory management the making of the production schedules then the issuing materials requisition that's going to be the in the raw materials stores so that's a different area and then we have the update cost records with the materials labor and overhead usage 
that's within cost accounting often helped by IT as needed and then we have the updating inventory records that's going to be in cost accounting and IT as needed release of goods to the shipping department so now we got the goods released to the shipping department finished good stores so that's going to be a separate location and then the approval and issuance of the purchase requisition that done in the inventory management